Hello from IBM Research. In this video, we're going to show you one of the examples of blockchain applications we are working on. This application is Trade Finance. Conducting international trade today requires a number of participants to interact with one another, like exporters, importers, banks, shipping and ground transport companies, port authorities, and even customs officials. It involves a complex maze of regulation and lots of document-based manual processes. So today, it, it is kind of ineffective and it adds time and expense to the process. In this demo, we will consider the flow of goods, in this case flowers, from an exporter in Malaysia to an importer in Germany. As these flowers move between these, the two parties, a number of events occur and record it documents like letter of credit, bill of lading, and phytosanitary certificate are generated and registered on the blockchain. This again creates a distributed trusted ledger that cuts across all of these different parties. In the blockchain network in this example, validation nodes are configured to be some of the parties I already mentioned, the shipping company, International Shipping, the Importers Bank, Bank of Berlin, and the Ports Authority, Port Kilang and Port of Hamburg were set as validator notes in this setup. All other parties involved in the process are granted either authorship or viewership of the data in the blockchain ledger. Now let's go to the demo. On this screen you can see the international shipping's view. These are the international trade transactions that are currently in progress. The pink location markers track the current state of each transaction. So to initiate a smart contract, the Bank of Berlin first creates a letter of credit. Usually letter of credits provide foreign exporters a guarantee of payment before they go ahead and produce or harvest for importers. Here a letter of credit may be generated by the bank's backend systems and stored in the blockchain. But in this demo here, we show it being created more manually for demonstration purposes. When the Create button is clicked, you can see the blockchain consensus protocol running and all four nodes automatically validating the transaction before it is added to the blockchain. When the exporter Malay Grow and its bank, the Bank of Malaysia, accept and view the letter of credit, a receipt is also registered on the blockchain. When the order flowers are ready to be shipped, the next step is to have them inspected by a National Plant Protection Organization, or NPPO, to make sure they meet import requirements positive outcome of this inspection means a phytosanitary certificate is issued and again it is registered in the blockchain. This shows how the blockchain can be used not only for recording events but also for storing data such as documents relevant to the process. Note that as an exporter, Malay grower can only see transaction records of when they accepted the letter of credit and when the phytosanitary certificate was issued, they are not able to see other transaction records, for example, of the creation of the letter of credit event, which is private to the importer and the importer's bank. Back to the demo. Once the inspection is done, the containers are sealed and bills of lading are issued for the transport of these containers. In this case, the international shipping company is the creator of bills of lading. This step can be made simple or even automated by combining data from backend systems with data that are already stored in the blockchain. Again, the event that has to do with the creation of bills of lading would be going through the same automatic validation process as the previous steps to make sure the validity of the transactions author in the blockchain. The containers 
are then transported from Malegro to the port of Keelang where the containers will be loaded onto a ship. The Port of Keelang Authority confirms the shipment and the containers are loaded onto the ship and then transported to the receiving port, in this case is the Port of Hamburg. Port of Hamburg confirms the shipment. All of these events can be recorded on blockchain. Again, note that the blockchain security and privacy controls only permit the Port of Hamburg to see just the data that pertains to it and nothing else. Finally, once the containers have been received, they are inspected by customs. The appropriate customs fee can be paid as soon as the inspection is completed and the transaction register on the blockchain. When the containers arrive at the importer, the final step involves fund transfers from the importer's account to the exporter and the shipper. This can either be done by the importer or its bank. To summarize, blockchain adds three key value-added benefits. First, it increases speed and reduces errors as the use of blockchain-based document storage replaces the need for physical exchanges and handling of documents. It also eliminates the need to rekey data, therefore less human errors. Second, transaction records could provide an end-to-end -end visibility to container information throughout the shipping process. At the same time, it preserves the privacy of data to only the appropriate parties. And third, blockchain provides a scalable ecosystem which lowers the barriers to adoption and fosters trust among all participants. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. And please contact us if you have further questions.